All right, so let's look at the definition of customer experience. And when you surf uh, the internet uh, or look on Twitter, these are some of the things you might see. CX, CX, CM, and those all refer to customer experience or the discipline of customer experience management. Now, if we unpack how we look at experience, obviously from a customer perspective, there's the more rational parts of experience you know, what the customer expects and what their goal is in that experience. But there's also the emotional part of the experience, how the customer feels. And then there's the more sensory part of the experience, what the customer sees, what they hear, what they taste, what they smell when they're in an interaction with your brand. Interesting thing is, if I ask you what your brand smells like, what would that be? They've done research and most corporates smell like cleaning liquid, ammonia. Now, it might smell clean, but does it smell particularly nice? I'm not sure that I like, would like my, my brand love brand to smell like cleaning liquid. So if we look at these pieces of the experience, I believe there's a different perspective. I believe that customer experience is not about how a customer feels about your brand. I believe it's how they feel about themselves in an interaction with your brand. That really shapes whether they would put themselves back in that experience. So let me tell you a little story. If I take myself, I'm the mother of three children. I'm not particularly organized when it comes to domestic affairs. So often I would get home after I've picked the kids up from school and only when I stand in front of the refrigerator would I realize that there's no milk and then I look across to the table and there's no bread either. Now to make a shopping trip on a weekend is a challenge for me, let alone on a Wednesday afternoon after a long day at the office. So the routine would then go like this. I would yell at the kids, let's get back in the car. I would then go to the nearest supermarket. At the supermarket, it is now peak hour. And at six o'clock in the evening to find parking at the supermarket is a, supermarket is a challenge. Then I would uh, get the kids out of the car and we would run into what I refer to as gym mom. So this is a perfectly made up woman, face beautiful, lipstick on, but she's in gym clothes. Now, all of the judgments that I could possibly have then surfaces. And after making small talk with gym mom, I would then start traversing the aisles of the store. Because the milk and bread is never in the front of the store, it's always in the back corner of the store. After getting the bread and milk, and fighting my way back to the front of the store with my kids asking whether they could have this, whether they could have that. I'm yelling, I brought you into this life and I will take you out of this life if I have to. My fight is not one of getting milk and bread anymore. It's now become one of staying a good mother, remaining a good mother for the duration of that shopping trip. After I've been in the queues, I leave the store quite angry that there wasn't enough tills open, quite angry at the fact that the milk is in the back of the store, but really I'm leaving the store feeling quite angry with myself that I didn't plan my life better. Now, if that supermarket surveys me, I'm going to tell them a whole lot of functional things that bothered me, but I will not tell them how I felt about myself and the fact that some of the functional issues put me in a position where I didn't feel like a great mother. I didn't feel that I compared with gym mom and I really don't want to go shopping on a Wednesday afternoon at six o'clock. So often the experiences are shaped by the things we don't see. And those things are, if we go back to Maslow, you know, what are our fundamental human needs? then what are our goals? And goals not just related to your product and your brand, but what are our goals in life? One of the goals I have is to be a great mother. 
Now, going to the supermarket on a Wednesday night at 6 o'clock doesn't give me the opportunity to really, you know, showcase uh, that I'm a good mother. And then the stories. What are the stories we tell ourselves about ourselves? One of the stories I admitted to earlier was that I'm not organized. But you know, I can be very organized. But the story I tell myself is that I'm fairly disorganized and that's why I get myself into these situations. And then our fears. And one of the fears you heard me talk about earlier is the fear that I'm not a good mother. Now, these things shape how I experience the world and how I experience your brand. And often, when I get into an interaction with an employee of a brand, they don't see these stories, but somehow my story and their story collides. And that's where conflict enters this experience. So understanding customer experience is very, very complex because it goes back to the basics of human nature. And unless we look at what happens inside this experience, we are not fully empowered to redesign experiences with a different outcome, to redesign experiences so we don't reinforce the stories and the fears that are already difficult to deal with.